My name is Brandon and this is Video Game History, a show where I look back on a certain franchise of video games and retrospectively review them. Despite one game already gracing the Nintendo DS, we're again going back to the Game Boy Advance with Camp Laszlo Leaky Lake Games. Camp Laszlo is a show that you either loved or hated. Personally, I love it, but it's incredibly obvious to see how irritating a lot of it could be for people. Despite the hate it receives, the show was popular enough to warrant developing a game based on it. The game was developed by Collision Studios, who also developed the Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends game on Game Boy Advance. This would explain why Camp Laszlo was also on the GBA. It was published by Crave Entertainment, who also published Foster's Home, as well as Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. Camp Laszlo Leaky Lake Games isn't even on Metacritic, and the only review I could find was from iGen, who gave the game a less than impressive 4 out of 10. Does this mean I'm walking into a disaster, or a hidden gem? Collision Studios released Camp Laszlo Leaky Lake Games on November 6, 2006, just a couple of weeks after they released Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends on the 17th of October. This would probably make you think that the game is rushed and half-assed because they were developing two games at once, and you'd be right in assuming that. Camp Laszlo Leaky Lake Games somehow makes Collision Studios' Foster's Home game seem great by comparison. The game is essentially a collection of Mario Party-style mini-games with a loose narrative connecting each one together. Maybe a better comparison would be that it's a collection of Cartoon Network Block Party style minigames, because likening them to Mario Party is a huge disservice to Mario Party. But even though the Block Party minigames were far from perfect, they were still much more well thought out and had a lot more effort put into them than the tripe served up here. Let's go through all 15 of the minigames, shall we? The first minigame is based on the old school kids game of thinking the floor is made of lava. Laszlo needs to jump from furniture to furniture to avoid falling into the lava. Here your goal is to grab 10 flags from Raj and Clam who are at either end of the level. You just platform back and forth for minutes at a time and it's one of the most dull and boring things I've ever played. By the time you've collected a few flags, you can do the platforming in your sleep. The platforming is also horrendous because there is literally no weight to it. Those who complain about Little Big Planet's floaty platforming have clearly never played this abomination. The next mini game sees you cleaning up the forest and it's one of the worst things I've played in my life. It's seriously like they took a Flash game from CartoonNetwork.com and slapped it into the game. Actually, that's a disservice to Cartoon Network Flash games. Here you just mash the D-pad in a circular direction and the trees get cleaned. It requires absolutely no thought or effort on the part of the player. The Teeter Totter minigame is next and literally just asks you to mash buttons. Again, absolutely no thinking required. The Mulberry Bush minigame is really the first that offers a challenge and requires any sort of effort. Here you have to track down the location of the mulberry bush, grab a mulberry and take it back to your basket without having it stolen away by a bird. Unfortunately, they make you do this 10 times, which just becomes frustrating and tedious. But hey, at least it's an actual minigame. The swimming minigame is next, and was pretty close to the most annoying of them all. You're required to collect a bunch of flags, but aren't given a map or any sort of way to locate them. This resulted in me getting all of the flags except for one extremely quick, and then backtracking all over the place trying to find that one final flag. It's honestly not enjoyable in any way, shape, or form. We then come to the Llama race, which you don't even get to control. Instead of actually racing, you're required to press a sequence of buttons that appear on the screen. This is so goddamn lazy. You can just tell the developers shat this out as an afterthought while they were developing Foster's Home. I'm not a fan of that game, but it's clear that it had 50 times more effort invested in it. The way the fishing minigame works is an absolute mystery to me, and it seems like you just mashed buttons for an undetermined amount of time and then you'd catch a fish. Much like all the other minigames, this one took way too long. Seriously, why did almost all of them have to last two and a half minutes? It's just way too long for what you're doing in most of these. To make matters worse, the diving game is mechanically identical to the llama race, except you're pressing the button sequences while diving now. If you needed any further proof that this game was an afterthought, there it is. The food fight could have had potential in theory, but in reality they just make you toss food at stationary targets, and instead of having you try to reach a target number of hits, they force you to play for the entire 2 minutes and 30 seconds. This was the longest 2 minutes and 30 seconds in my life. It just wouldn't end. The next mini game requires you to balance on an acorn. It's laughably easy and it's boring. But then we come to the motherfucking tubing mini game. This thing can fuck right off. Here you have to try and tube your way through a course, dodging hazards and enemies. It sounds alright, but when you're presented with the slipperiest controls in video game history, it becomes an absolute nightmare. Who looked at this, played this, and thought, yep, that's gonna be great to play? I challenge you to find anybody who would think this minigame is fun. And to top it all off, they reuse this minigame. 
Remember how I said the diving and llama race minigames were identical? Well, the tug of war minigame is identical too. Could you get any more lazy? There are only 15 minigames in this, and three of them are the same press the button sequence games, and two of them are the tubing minigames. The treasure minigame is dull, and you'll be feeling like that time limit actually lasts for two hours. The final minigame is the worst kart racer in history. The camera is so zoomed in that it's impossible for you to see any hazards that come in your way. Despite the fact you'll be smashing into every hazard, it's almost impossible to lose. There have honestly been better kart racing minigames on CartoonNetwork.com throughout the years than the one you'll find here. When you base your entire game around minigames, you better make those minigames good. When I say Flash Games or Cartoon Network Block Party are better, I'm not joking. What's on offer here is really that bad. However, somehow the minigames aren't even the worst part. Remember how I said each minigame was connected with a loose narrative thread? That's the worst part. There's an incredibly boring story here about Laszlo and friends wanting to compete in the Camp Olympic Games or some shit. All I know is this story resulted in me doing dozens of fetch quests. Seriously, all you do between minigames is walk to a person, talk, walk to another person, get an item, then walk back to the first person. These fetch quests are so menial, and the fact that the game has a compass that directs you straight to where you need to go makes them meaningless. There are so many fetch quests that I'd honestly estimate that 90% of my playthrough was spent walking and talking, and only 10% was spent playing the minigames. And why the hell is there so much talking? It's like reading a novel sometimes with the amount of dialogue they were spitting out. Conversations just got longer and longer as you progressed through the game, and this resulted in me speeding things up with my emulator. I played through probably three quarters of the walking and talking sections at 10 times speed, and the game still took me over two hours to complete, and I was still sick of all the walking and talking. I cannot imagine doing all that at regular speed. It would genuinely take you over three hours to beat this boring waste of time. My best guess is the developers knew they were shitting out this game alongside Foster's and they added all the walking and talking as a way to make the game seem much longer than it actually is. Welcome to Camp Kidney, home of the trustworthy Bean Scouts. Here young tenderfoots are molded into strong woodsmen. Let's listen in as the campers rise to begin the day's activities. Yeehaw! Scoutmaster Lumpus, Laszlo's riding old Slewfoot again. Well, it's always good to start off the morning with some brisk exercise in the yard. Run for your life! He's one happy camper, Camp Laszlo. Premiering Friday, July 8th at 8 on Cartoon Summer. Laszlo! There is nothing positive I have to say about Camp Laszlo Leaky Lake games. The closest I can come to being positive about it is congratulating them on not having any game breaking bugs. The mini games are dreadful, and the fact that 5 of the 15 are identical is just not good enough. I actually feel sorry for any kid who got this game and then had to sit through hours of boring walking and talking to NPCs. It's a damn shame that Laszlo's only video game outing is such a disaster.